This is a rigid mandrel mounted upside down at the moment in a drill press with a rigid branded drill bit mounted into the mandrel. The mandrel and the drill bit combined are part of a hole saw kit. These hole saws are interchangeable. The biggest one is about six inch or so, really big, and the smallest one is probably around one inch or so. And all of these combined make a whole saw kit. The mandrel is the centerpiece of all of this. On the threaded part of the mandrel here, this one, that's how these interlock. I'll show you how they work. And at the moment, it's mounted in this drill press for measuring run out. In order for the mandrel to be functioning and fully exchangeable with these hole saws, it's important that this be dead straight, which it is. I just checked it and this be mounted in a way and the man mandrel have a geometry that ensures that this actually doesn't skate and doesn't slide and skid on the surface of the material. That's not always up to the material surface conditions whether this bends and skates a little bit. It's also up to the design features of the mandrel. In this video I'm going to measure run out on it to see how much it wobbles sideways if any and we'll also look at some of the design features that make this rigid mandrel an awesome design and an awesome product that I've been using with great success for years. Recently I uh, did some finishing work, finishing uh, carpentry or joinery or some, some finishing woodworking with it and I noticed that even though the drill bit is dead straight, it still has some skating and some wobble on it that uh, also shakes the material sideways somewhat violently, as well as it gives rise to the uh, whole saw teeth suddenly grabbing the material. So this run out is a safety issue that this be minimized. I haven't noticed it because it's not in so far in years of use because I have been using it as it is designed to be a demolition or a crude construction tool, not a finishing woodworking fine touches tool. So, but I did notice it grabs a little bit. So I'm going to check this run out. This is how it works. This dial indicator or dial gauge here is just slightly touching at the base of the drill bit. Just in case we have any slight imperfection in the drill bit, that's eliminated because we're not looking at it here at the tip where this deflection or this error might be the biggest. We're looking at it right at the base here where any kind of uh, bending it could be the least amount possible. This is a probe in the dial indicator that can be withdrawn or retracted and as you can see it gets back to zero or very nearly I can kind of align this bezel a little bit better there. Now it's dead centered. Um, we will start here at the 12 o'clock position where you may be able to see it says rigid on the on the uh, drill bit shank itself there and uh, and that's where we start and that's where we also finish. We're gonna do two full circles and see how much the run out is. I'm gonna spin the uh, spindle of the drill bit or the uh, drill press by just hand force. So let's go around Oops, right away it goes uh, about three thousandth of an inch maybe four that's four it's free it's free hanging I got both of my hands down here so whatever reading that you see is as a, resu as a result of this being not straight if this was perfectly straight that needle would not move anywhere so that's four thousandth of an inch one way every increment that you see is one thousandth of an inch and in, at this point I'm not interested in uh, reducing fractions I just need a total readout in thousandths so we're gonna add both sides of the zero so four on one side and so far eight on the other but we can keep going about 15 14 free hanging as is I got both of my hands here maybe yeah I can just turn it back a little bit yeah 14 and a half there okay so that was 14 and a half plus five in the other direction actually in the other direction because we are still not at at uh, back where the drill bit uh, but the rigid letters were facing me so it's actually about 9, 10, 11, 12 thousandth 
something like that. Oops, 11 or 12 in the other direction. Yeah, we'll go with 11. So we have 11 one way and 15 in the other. And this is where the letters are coming back to this 12 o'clock position. And I expect the needle to return to zero as it should. There, we're back to zero. All right, we're gonna go one more round, see how it goes. It swings out to 14. We're gonna go with 14 in one direction and 12 in the other direction. 14 plus 12, okay. And just one more time, 14 in one direction, and that's 10, 11, 12 in the other direction. Okay, 14 plus 12 it is. So, 14 plus 10 and 10 is 20, or the 4 plus the 2 is 6, 26,000, if I'm not mistaken there. 14 plus 12, 26, now 26,000 of an inch. Let me convert it to millimeters. That's how 26,000 of an inch looks like in decimal. So times this by 25.4 is about 0.6 millimeters, almost 0.7 millimeters. So I don't know, a skinny three quarters of a millimeter, something like that. Whatever, you get it. It's 0.66 millimeters plus change. So it's, um, yeah, it's two thirds of a millimeter. How about that? It's pretty close to two thirds of a millimeter. Uh, that's not much. I didn't expect anything. I didn't know it was that much. So that explains why it's uh, grabbing the, or, or skating on the surface of the material and uh, shaking violently when this one is being drilled because that, that uh, two-thirds of a millimeter, uh, that's for the whole circle, so it's moving uh, violently, that two-thirds of a millimeter. It's not a whole lot. But it's a safety issue in uh, when it's mounted in a drill press. When it's mounted in a power tool, a portable power tool, not a shop tool, then it's not noticeable. So let's take it out of the of the drill press, and I want to show you why this point sixty six millimeter, two thirds of a millimeter, twenty six thousandths of an inch, is uh, is there. Why it's so wobbly. Why it's wobbly is, if you look at it, there, is because this drill bit goes into the center of this mandrel, but it's not exactly in the center. It's shoved to one side. It's shoved to one side by this set screw. This set screw is of a brilliant design. I like it when it's big like this and you can clean it with a simple tool should there be any dirt or sawdust being packed into it and you can remove it with a simple tool. In some other designs that are less efficient, we'll just go with that, this set screw needs an allen key or hex key and those designs I really dislike because in the hexagonal corners of a hexagonal recess dust get gets packed in. It's impossible to insert the tool without cleaning the hole. First, if the hole doesn't get cleaned to the full depth, then the tool gets only inserted partially. If it's only partially inserted, it's gonna either round the corners on the tool or on the set screw, and then it's not coming out. So this one is brilliantly designed. It's big, so, uh, so it doesn't need a microscope to see the details on it. I'm gonna take out the whole thing, the whole set screw, so you can see why it's brilliant. Size does matter, ladies and gentlemen. In the set screw business, the bigger it is, the easier it is to grab, easier it is to find it on the floor. And the set screw acts or, or is uh, mated together with this flat spot that's milled into the drill bit. The interlock inside the mandrel, like so. Having a large enough surface area on the set screw is really important to transmit all of the torque to it successfully because what's important of, on this drill bit here is that it not be spinning when the mandrel is spinning. I have seen bad designs where the set screw is unable to hold the drill bit in place and this is just spinning and this is stationary. That's a really bad scenario. So this is designed brilliantly and why you have two different flat landing spots on it is that you can set it uh, with um, 
a longer length of it exposed or less of it exposed to suit your heart's content. This is how they work together. This one just spins on it and those index pins there extend at the bottom to lock this, sorry, to lock this thing in place. Now thereabouts you can see the index pins advancing in the bottom of the hole saw. So it's important that, this, that all of this mechanism work in dirty conditions. That's why the threads are coarse threads instead of fine threads and like and these that these uh, serrated surface here be also coarse and the threading then that there be enough clearances between this protruding index pin and the hole in which the index pin there runs so that this still moves in dirty conditions because this is the design feature that's uh, that and that's important. This is why this run out on the bit or this little wobble or play that you can hear if I can get it closer to the camera there. So that's the little sound this makes side, side to side when I just do this with it. This cannot be and will not be reduced to any less than this two thirds of a millimeter. The reason for it is dirt. This needs to go together in dirty conditions and this needs to fit and assemble in dirty construction conditions. That's why they don't want to make it any less than two thirds of a millimeter. It's not going to get improved or eliminated. This will at no point become a finishing tool. For finishing drilling work you should ideally be getting a large Forstner bit or a large, say, high-speed steel sawtooth bit where instead of removing a whole cookie which is, this is a, this is the cookie, this plug, some people call it a plug, I call it cookie because it looks like a cookie so in this whole saw operation uh, this cookie waste product is uh, not turned into sawdust but in Forstner bits uh, where there are serrate or uh, or um, sawtooth bit, uh, there is a center point machined into the drill bit and there are saw teeth here and everything in this area of a circle, everything is turned into sawdust. Slow and tedious but very precisely made tools. These ones are fast and meant for butchering. Okay, so with yeah, meant for rough work, we'll go with that. So with that design uh, requirement in mind that this is not gonna get much improved but as a, as a tool for finishing it's brilliant and I've been using this successfully for years in some bad designs I've seen this central drill bit uh, so much uh, that the, the hole and the shank of this so much um, hmm, uh, this being so much oversized that this drill bit is shoved so much to the side to it that it that it skates on the surface or wobbles a millimeter and a half or some such thing really really impractical even in coarse work or rough work as well it's like I said it's skating and then it's and then it's grabbing the material suddenly so it's uh, really an issue of safety that the mandrel and its matching drill bit be made with as much precision as possible yet still be able to assemble in in uh, rough conditions in dirty conditions so I strongly recommend this rigid mandrel it's a universal mandrel that fits uh, whoever makes whole saws this one is Milwaukee so that's why Milwaukee can uh, work together with rigid rigid also make uh, their uh, their own uh, whole saws as well those work of course uh, or fit just as well and uh, I strongly recommend using quality tools such as this when it comes to whole saws.